Hi everybody, good evening and welcome back to Thoro Newspaper Analysis. Today is 5th of May and this entire video series is brought to you by Law Seekho. Now as far as the agenda for today is concerned, first we have the editorial segment where we take up for our discussion an Indian Express article titled as Take Action. See here essentially we talk about the recent development in the ongoing protest by the wrestlers of our nation. This protest is against the very president of the Wrestling Federation of India because a severe allegation of sexual harassment, of criminal intimidation among others, they were leveled against him and the wrestlers were alleging non-action by the police. So now with the Supreme Court's intervention, something has happened. What and how we'll be taking up uh, while we discuss this segment. Now, secondly, we talk about the important news updates. This is relevant for those of your exams where current affairs is a part of your syllabus. And thirdly, we talk about important legal developments for the day. So starting off with the TNA, first we have the article which is titled as Take Action. This is going to be our manner of understanding of it. First, we talk about the story so far and the recent development. Then we talk about why the protest it is being still carried on. Thirdly, we discuss the important findings of the Mericom committee. And fourthly, we talk about the parting note of the author where he has highlighted the gravity of the problem which this entire matter has brought to the forefront. Starting off with the story so far, see in the month of uh, January, this news broke to the entire nation that uh, severe allegations of sexual harassment, of criminal intimidation and mismanagement of funds of the Federation, they were leveled against the president of wrestler, the Wrestling Federation of India, who is Bridge Bhushan Singh. He's also an MP of uh, the ruling BJP, BJP party. Now, as a result of this, uh, the uh, there were certain protests. They were started off by the with uh, on the streets of uh, New Delhi, and this was uh, done by the wrestlers of our country. They brought the voices of the unheard to the forefront, and as a result of it, the government constituted a committee which was headed by Mericom. Since the committee was constituted, this protest it was halted for some time. Now, the committee it submitted its report. However, as per the protesters, the report was not made public. And there was inaction on part of the police because it refused to lodge FIR or it did not lodge FIR against the, uh, the accused person. So as a result of it, the protest was resumed in the month of April and then the matter reached the Honorable Apex Court. In one of its hearings, the Supreme Court issued notice to the Delhi police. And now after 10 days of protest from the women wrestlers and a nudge from the Honorable Apex Court, the police, they finally lodged FIR in this matter against the president of the federation. And the police has also apprised the bench of the fact that uh, they've taken measures to ensure the security of the protesters as well. Now see, uh, before the Honorable Apex Court, one of the demands of the protesters or the request was that uh, an independent probe be committed in this, uh, be, uh, be conducted in this particular matter by a retired judge. So the Supreme Court did not concede to this uh, request. However, the bench stated that the protesters, they were at liberty to approach judicial magistrate or the Delhi High Court to probe into the matter in case it is not being conducted uh, in conformity with the law. However, the protesters have still not stopped their protest. And the reason is because they've already stated it before the media and that it is their concern that the president, he is a very strong person in terms of his connections and there is a possibility of uh, his intervention in the probe and the probe being becoming impartial. So therefore, they are still carrying on with their protest. Now, see, as far as the findings of the committee is concerned, the committee, it was established by the government in response to the first uh, batch of protest. And uh, this committee, in its report, it highlighted a very concerning and unfortunate thing. It stated that there was no internal complaints committee which was formed in the federation. See, internal complaints committee, it is a mandate of the Posh Act of 2013, which is essentially the law which seeks to prevent sexual harassment of women at workplace. It mandates that any workplace which has members uh, to the number of 10 or more, it should have a committee, the composition of which is also provided in the 2013 Act. And this committee is going to be responsible for taking care of all the grievances or complaints of women who are alleging sexual harassment. So it was highlighted that the, the Internal Complaints Committee, ICC, it was not there in the Federation. Also, as per uh, an uh, investigation that was carried out by the Indian Express, uh, this is an also unfortunate state of affairs that uh, 
16 out of 30 national federations in the field of sports they fail to meet this criteria that is they do not have this committee also this has come uh, at a time when we've seen increasingly uh, best increasing amount of women participation in the field of sports uh, to take an example uh, the Kelo India 2020 tournament it saw a massive increase of 160 percent in women participation when compared to two years back which is 2018 tournament now see uh, the fact that medalists at international level they had to take to the street twice to make their grievances heard it is indeed a very sad state of affairs and also in the absence of proper probe and action being taken against the accused the rings of beti bachao and khelo india they are indeed hollow and uh, there is no substance to it and now we proceed to the segment of personalities the first is an update about the new appointment of the president of World Bank. Ajay Banga, who is a 63-year-old Indian-American, he has become the first Indian-American to become the president of World Bank. He takes charge of the World Bank at a time when it faces the critical task of A, reducing global poverty, and secondly, the major issue of climate change. Previously, he served as the president and the CEO of uh, the MasterCard company. Secondly, three Iranian imprisoned female journalists, they won top UN prize. The winners, Nilofar Hamidi, Ilaha Mohammadi, and Nargis Mohammadi, they were recognized for their work in reporting on human rights abuses in the country of Iran and for their commitment to truth and to accountability. Hamidi and Mohammadi, they played a very crucial role in breaking to the entire world the news of death of 22-year-old Masa Amini while she was in police custody for wearing her headscarf too loosely. Amini's death, it sparked months-long protests across Iran, leading to one of the most significant challenges to Islamic Republic since the 2009 Green Movement. Next, we have an update about uh, the AI godfather, Jeffrey Hinton quitting Google. So in an interview with the New York Times, Mr. Hinton, he said that he was very worried about the AI's capacity of creating convincing false images and texts creating a world where people will quote unquote not be able to know what is truth anymore the technology it could quickly displace workers and become a greater danger as it learns new behaviors moving on india has been placed at 161st position in the world freedom index global media watchdog reporters without borders which publishes the yearly report on press freedom in various countries across the world it had last year ranked India at 150th position in a survey of 180 countries. According to the Reporters Without Border, the phenomenon that dangerously restrict the free flow of information, it is the acquisition of media outlets by oligarchs who maintain close ties with political leaders. Next, we have an update coming from the state of Manipur. So the CM of the state, he launches facial recognition system for inner line permits. Inner line permits essentially these uh, are official travel documents which are issued by the government of India for the purpose of allowing inward travel of an Indian citizen into an area which is called uh, the protected area. There are certain states in uh, India which are declared as uh, protected areas, parts of them. And if an Indian citizen wants to travel into that portion, then there is a permit that is needed and it is called the inner permit, inner line permit. So recently the Manipur chief minister N. Biren Singh, he launched the facial recognition system for ILP system and he flagged off two camera mounted mobile vehicles. Singh, while addressing, uh, uh, addressing the event, he said that the newly launched system, it will help in effective checking of the ILP holders whose validity has expired and in also uh, ensuring the better management of the overall system. This has brought us to the international segment for today. So researchers have recently discovered a massive 900 feet deep blue hole in Mexico. The giant blue hole, it is around 900 feet deep and scientists have dubbed it as the second deepest blue hole which is found on the planet Earth. This is located in uh, Chetumal Bay and it is named as Tamja which means deep water in Mayan. This is one of uh, the family of languages spoken in Mexico. Next, we have an update about the International Firefighters Day, which uh, started off in 1919 after five fighters died tragically during a wildfire in Australia. 
when uh, which became uh, which engulfed these firefighters because of change of direction in the wind this day it highlights uh, the world's community's uh, attention uh, to the the important task that these firefighters have to uh, perform and with this we've uh, come to the last segment for today which is uh, the legal update segment we have an update from the honorable apex court so the supreme court rejects challenge to these uh, to one of the sections of the representation of people act of 1951 which is section 62 subsection 5 supreme court refused to entertain pil which is challenge section 62 subsection 5 of the representation of people act of 1951 and seeking for right of vote for the prisoners this section essentially it bars that a prisoner shall not have a right to cast vote in any election while they are uh, such prisoners or while they are in custody of police so the court while uh, stating its disinclination for not proceeding further with this uh, pil noted that section 62 subsection 5 it had already been upheld by the honorable apex court on two other occasions the name of this particular matter is aditya prasanna bhattacharya versus union of india and others and with this we have come to an end for the tna for today in case you want to get access to the free study materials that we curate or the tna slides which were used in this video please feel free to join our telegram channel for the same you may scan the barcode here or you may click on the link which is provided in the description of this video these are the point of contact in case you want to get in touch with law seeko also the quiz which is based on yesterday's tna it is made available in the description of this video thank you for being with us